Hi everyone! In this video I'll bring you solar stats for October. I'll also discuss the payback of the system and how October was quite an expensive month for my dad's Tesla. It was definitely more entertaining with his new screen in the back. Um, so I just looked at the map to see where we are going and I really like that. Also look at the auntie and I've hid her here but maybe in next time um, I do a video. I'll probably hide her somewhere else because that's a bit of an easy spot. So let me know in the comments where you see him. Like and subscribe. Always remember about Octi. Stay tuned for more. Are you off to my job again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on you, let me have my seat back. No! <laughs> <laughs> Give me back my seat. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Danny V. Solar and that was mini Danny V. Solar giving you a great introduction there, much better than I can do. On this channel you can follow both of our journeys through all things solar, electric vehicles, renewables, energy tariffs and much more. So please make sure you hit the like button if you find this video useful and also consider subscribing to my channel and that helps me reach more people on YouTube. And also let me know how your solar system got on this month if you have one and if you're considering get one, hopefully this video is useful for you. Well. We're into November and it's that time of the year where the solar drops off a cliff for winter and the desire for longer, lighter days continues. As a reminder of my system, I have a 6.32 kilowatt peak east-west array in the northeast of England. I have six panels on the east-facing roof and 10 panels on the west-facing roof and I also have a Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery Gen 2 and a Gen 1 5 kilowatt inverter. So onto the solar stats and what a miserable month October was weather-wise. If you watched my previous monthly stats video for September, you'll know that I moved across to Intelligent Octopus Go, as it's now called, which gives me a minimum of six hours cheap electricity overnight for seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour. And also a reasonable export rate of 15 pence per kilowatt hour. Being on this tariff has changed the way I use the solar in quite a lot of ways. And it's less about the solar generation and solar export and more about making use of the cheap hours overnight, particularly for charging my EV, which is a requirement to be on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. If you would like to join Octopus and take advantage of one of their smart tariffs or the great customer service, it would be great if you could use the code that's on screen now. If you sign up using this referral code, you get £50 when you join, and I also get £50 added to my account as well. Let's get into the charts. So if we start with the generation for the month, we had a total of 204.5 kilowatt hours for this month. So half of what we achieved in September where we had a total of 407 kilowatt hours. 44 kilowatt hours of that went straight into the home, 16 went into charging the battery and 143 kilowatt hours was exported to the grid. For the best day generation, that was the 12th of October, which if I remember rightly was a lovely day and the system generated nearly 17 kilowatt hours for the day. The worst day was the 20th where we only made just 1.2 kilowatt hours. So quite a bit of swing this month. And if we take a closer look at the best day for generation, we had a pretty nice curve as you can see there, which we would expect to see since I have the six panels on the east facing roof and the 10 panels on the west roof. So a very clear day with basically no cloud cover at all. The maximum generation for the day was just 2.35 kilowatts at around 1 p.m. So very different to summer with the solar starting to generate at around about 7.30 a.m. and finishing at around about 6 p.m. So I've added this extra chart this month. So this is the same graph, but I've also included the export and import to the graph as I think it really shows nicely the way I'm now using the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff as the solar generation drops off throughout the year. So my battery gets charged up in the cheap hours between 11.30 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. to 100%. And as you can see, the export curve in red almost exactly matches the generation curve in yellow. And the generation throughout the day kept the battery at 100% during the daylight hours. And then we only dropped to 80% for the rest of the day. And if we look at the worst day, this is a very different story. Only 1.2 kilowatt hours generation and a very different looking chart to the best day of the month with a maximum generation of just 0.45 kilowatts. On this day, the generation started just before 9am and it was finished by about 5pm. 
Again, if we look at the chart with the export and the import added, you can see just how little generation there actually was. No idea what happened around 6 p.m. Um, I can only assume that was during when tea was being made and there wasn't enough in the battery and supply from the solar to support the house consumption, so we ended up drawing from the grid a little. Still though, the battery didn't drop below 60%, so that overnight charging lasting really well. And if we look at the grid import minus the EV consumption, that was 110 kilowatt hours for the month. And as you can see, this is mostly charging the battery overnight and then a little bit for the home. I'll come on to the EV consumption later, but this isn't included in these charts here. Home consumption was 166.55 kilowatt hours. Again, minus the EV, so around about the same as usual for across the year. About half of that was from the solar and grid, and the other half came from the battery to support the house load. We had a pretty consistent usage throughout the month of between 4 and 7 kilowatt hours, apart from the last day of the month when we had a few days away on holiday for half term. On to the EV consumption for the month, and from the Zappi graph, as you can see, uh, straight away you'll notice a problem. The usage for some reason wasn't recorded for a good chunk of the month. I've had this before for a day or two with the My Energy Zappy, where I think it loses a signal, but never this bad. And I hadn't noticed it until I checked the stats for the end of the month. I can only assume that this is due to the Wi-Fi signal dropping, but everything else seemed to work fine. So I've had to try and piece this together from the Octopus Smart Meter usage and then from the Tessie app, which also tracks my journeys and charges in the car. Anyway, I calculated the total EV consumption for the month of 337 kilowatt hours, so quite a lot more than normal, and this included a few longer trips to Birmingham, where I attended the solar and storage live show, and also a trip away towards the end of the month as well. I did end up having one charge at a BP Pulse station when I went to the NEC, and on also a couple of supercharges throughout the month as well. So I think the total usage for the car was around about 380 kilowatt hours for the month. And if we move on to grid export, remember we are now getting 15 pence per kilowatt hour for export on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff. And we had a total export for the month of 147 kilowatt hours. Nearly all of that was solar straight to the grid. So a decent amount of export with the change in the usage because we are charging the battery overnight. And if we look at the payback, we consumed 166 kilowatt hours in the house and imported 110.4 from the grid, excluding the electric vehicle. Uh, so that gives an import cost of £10.39. The generation for the month was 204.5 kilowatt hours, as mentioned, and that equated to 147 of that being exported, which was £22.06 that we earned from export earnings. So the cost for this month without solar would have been £44.27 for the electricity that we used. And the cost with solar was minus £11.67. So a saving of £55.94 for the month. If we add that in, that's a cumulative savings now of £1,258 and a remaining payback of 9721 If we add the car usage in kilowatt hours onto that, that's 382 and I, have, I haven't put the flux cost in this month, but uh, there was also that BP Pulse charge, which was really expensive at 85 pence per kilowatt hour, which I used when I was down in Birmingham. So the total cost this month was a lot more than usual for the car, so £81.68. Uh, but when you compare that to the equivalent diesel cost for the same miles on my old car, that would be around about £268.71 for that. So fuel savings of around about £187.03. So still much better driving the EV than filling up with diesel in my old car. If we add those two savings together, that comes to a total of £242.97. Cumulative savings, if we include the car as well, is £1,834.54. And that gives a remaining payback of £9,145. So if we then move on to the bills overall, I think for September we had to pay a few pounds. Um, so this month is likely to be more with the car included as well. So if we look at that, we have £15.07 in standing charge with electricity, which can't be avoided. A charge of £40.23. Remember, this is just for my home, so this doesn't include the extra EV charges outside of the home charging. Export was minus £22 
And if we look at the gas usage, we've had the heating on quite a lot this month. So the standard charge, £8.43 for the gas and £30.99 for the gas usage throughout the month. Still on the gas tracker tariff with Octopus, which fluctuates, but we're paying around about 5 to 6 pence per kilowatt hour at the moment for that. So that gives a total of £72.66 for the month. So starting to increase quite a bit now going into winter, uh, but don't forget that does include car charging as well. So still much better off with the solar panels than not. And if we look at the solar generation graph, you can see fading down now into November and December. So coming up a year now in a couple of months when uh, I've had this system. And similar looking graph for the worst, best and average monthly generation. So the best was 16.91. The worst was 1.2 and the average for the month was 6.58. So all following a very similar kind of uh, kind of curve there on that graph. So definitely not as much solar generation now going into the winter months, but solar still doing its part and helping out with the bills. In particular on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, really making a difference with uh, both the way I use electricity and also how much I'm saving each month. Anyway, that's it for this week. Hopefully you found that useful. If so, click the like button and also subscribe to my channel for more similar content. As always, I want to provide you with real world data. So if you're looking to get a solar and battery system installed, then hopefully that's useful for you. And if you have any questions about the system, my generation or anything else, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out my octopus link and did you spot Octi during the video? If so, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Like and subscribe.